recording. Good evening and welcome or good afternoon uh, if you're in Georgia and welcome to this <laughs> chat between Jim and I. Jim and I have known each other for the last 10 years since we met on a networking site in the UK called Academy and we've kept in touch ever since and I've watched in wonder as Jim has arranged conference after conference all around the USA with hundreds of attendees all giving the most amazing recommendations after they've actually been uh, and I wondered how that was achieved so I had a chat with Jim during the week and said can we come and talk about it and that's why we're here tonight we're going to explore uh, with Jim's help how to produce and market large conferences which is I guess a, uh, a combination of art and science Jim art and science and um, you know we just started doing this um, 30 years ago uh -huh. So, and my wife is a, is a world-class meeting planner. She, she works the venues, the hotels, she puts the, the physical part of it together, the food service, the, the things that go with it. Um, I, I do the, the setting up of uh, all of the AV, the audio visual, and uh, I line up the sales and the sponsors. So it's a team effort. Uh, my wife and I are very much involved in the business and um, we're, we're inseparable. And we, we work together so well. But, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's an art form, Stephen. Absolutely. And, and not, not everyone's suited for it. Um, there, there's two types of events. There's a seminar, which is one person, or a conference, which is a number of speakers and, and sponsors even. Right. Okay. Now, uh, for an event to take place, you need uh, the event to be sponsored. What's the approach to get sponsorship? I mean, once you start off with nothing, how do you go about it? Well, there's two revenue sources, of course. You've got, or three, actually. Yep. Uh, revenue sources, the sponsors are the largest revenue source. Now, my particular event, the sponsors will pay anywhere from $7,500 to $15,000 to participate in a two-day event. Okay. So that's the, the, the biggest part of the money. That'll go, uh, usually our events have 100, 150 people. Um, we, we could go larger. We'd love to go larger, but uh, that that's... That's a, the sponsors are putting up a hundred thousand, um, hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars at that. Yeah. And then, then the other revenue source is the attendees, and basically we, we generally charge fifteen hundred dollars U.S. per per attendee. Uh -huh. And then the, the third revenue source is we, we sell our products and services there. And um, my gosh, I attended a conference that I partnered up in just this this week, and I sold uh, four consultancies. That that'll be major revenues into the future, right? So, so you you have to look at all your profit centers and make them synergistic where they all work together. Okay. The, the sponsors that's the one that most people don't get, and um, I allow the sponsors to have their speaker on stage, provided the speaker's uh, good enough and has material that the audience would like to have. So the sponsors view it as a chance to get their speaker on stage, and we. Uh, we're automobile industry, right? Uh, yep. Most of my conferences, not all, but most of my conferences are, are in the automobile industry and retail. And we have a number of vendors that would like to sell things to the car dealers in the audience. And they'd like to be on stage and have an exhibit booth in the room. And so the sponsorship includes a six foot table booth, uh -huh. they put their own back backdrop, their own, their own furnishings around it. We yep. give them electricity on that booth. We give them wireless internet. And we allow them to have a, a speaker on stage for 45 minutes with a complimentary subject, and we promote the heck out of it. And that's part of the, the value the sponsors get for pre promotion. Yeah. You're frozen up on me, Stephen. Okay, well, Stephen gets, gets right. that. So, so let's. Right, I'm going to refresh, refresh and come back. Okay, right. jump out and come back. That's one of the, the that's one of the blab is still in beta and that's one of the things that happens. But Stephen will be right back with us. Uh oh, I, I think I've been locked out. Let me, let me let him back in. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've both been doing this for a while now. And the Jim quite rightly really said it's, it is a, a beta situation, so occasionally we'll get a glitch. Uh, which is with uh, you in the midst of a question. Yep. Yeah. So the, the next question is that the sponsor, you, the sponsors, you put together a package for them which yes. means that they're going to get directly to their target market, which mm -hmm. is the dealers. So they're going to get two days in which they can interact with the dealers through uh, the store, through a speaker 
putting the message out uh, during the event itself. Absolutely. They have a speaker on the stage. And uh, Jim, that's a 45 minute adventure. Um, they have the opportunity to network with the people during the breaks and the, we, we have a cocktail reception the, the first night. Um, we do different things. We'll have a live band or karaoke has been real popular recently, but right. we're having a cocktail uh, food reception in the evening. And um, it's a production it's, it, and the sponsors get a lot of value out of it. Spe My sponsors tell me they get as much value as their money from the pre the pre advertising I do, mm -hmm. yep. you know, as you, as you well know, and maybe the audience doesn't know, I have a hundred thousand friends and followers on social media, you know, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. And, and I use that all synergistically. We're almost promoting a hundred percent on social media today. Yes. All, yeah. all of our advertising, Twitter, Facebook, um, my, my Facebook page is generating $35,000 a month in revenues. Just it's amazing. So we'll, we'll definitely come back to that one. Uh, yeah, that's later that's, on that's the show. part of the synergy of, part of the mix, marketing. Excuse part me. Of the mix. Yeah. yeah. Right. My, my next uh, topic, because you have a, a sponsor, is how do you actually decide where you're going to hold the event? Okay. How do you decide where? And, and that's where a lot of people actually don't do well. It's, right. I, I need a city that has a hub airport. Uh huh. Okay. You know, where, where, where it's accessible. I need a, a population center, obviously. And we try not to do it against the water. Right. Um, because if you're, if you're up against the coast, you've got half your market land area you cut off. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you want it to be in center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Surrounded on four sides. You, you need four sides of, of population around you. Right. Okay. And, yeah. And, and of course, um, a lot of phone calls. I make a hundred phone calls a day when I'm selling this event. Right. And that's so, phone conversations. That's not voicemails or I'm actually contacting these people. So you got to have good lists. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, okay. We've got a host of questions coming up from what you've said. So we'll, <laughs> we'll take it from there. But the, the next, the next stage is you, you found a venue. You, you, you are happy with it. Um, and you've negotiated a price. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. a price of, and you've got a number of things you, you can do with the hotels and that, that that's a big topic of conversation are you crackling i'm cracking uh you're sounding fine here okay very good yeah. so we, uh, we have a number of things we do with the hotels and um negotiating with the ho hotels alone is an art form yes. i don't like to have the, the the meeting i want them sleeping where the meeting is where they're okay. They're not having to travel. They're not getting caught up in traffic even, yep. uh, you know, a mile or two. So what we're doing is, and and we, uh, if you have enough sleeping rooms, say say I have a, an event where we're anticipating 125 attendees, I will guarantee 50 mm -hmm. sleeping rooms a night. And I have right. to pay for those if we don't fill them. But that, that's a safe bet that half of your people will stay at the venue. So... Then they'll, they'll generally give you the, the ballroom for free on the basis of 50 sleeping rooms, which for two days, that's 100, yep. that's 100 okay. nights. So when you do yep. that, and if you have enough sponsors, they almost fill, the, fill the, the venue alone for the sleeping rooms. They almost make that obligation come true. And then okay. you have a yep. catering budget. And we generally yep. have uh, sit-down breakfast, sit-down lunch, uh, cocktail reception the first day. And then we have sit down breakfast, sit down lunch the second day, and two breaks, ten thirty and three thirty. We run these events mm -hmm. eight to five. So yep. negotiating with the hotels, you got your your catering budget, and uh, they want you to come in at your catering budget. So my, my wife is amazing the way she works these hotels, and you know we we, we usually use Marriott. You know, by by mm -hmm. sticking with with one hotel, you generally get a reputation with the hotels and they talk to each other and they, they receive you more openly. Yep. You know, when you call in cold to a hotel and they don't know you and you say you're a meeting planner, everybody's a meeting planner. So it, the Marriott works real well for us. So rep reputation is important and, and building that comes with time and actually putting the effort. Well, yeah, well, we've got, we got, um, we got such good, yep. we have such good credit with these hotels and 
such goodwill. They check us out and, you know, sometimes we'll spend 60, 70, $80,000 putting on one of these events. And, and that's all yeah. my American Express cards. So we're getting those points. And then we get 100,000 Marriott points for being a meeting planner. <laughs> A lot of angles, okay, I, lot I, of I, can see, I can see. I see. It's what we have is a jigsaw, and you're slotting the pieces in. And each of those pieces either contributes to the event itself or contributes to revenue. Now, when it comes to organising the event, of course, you you, you are a, a known speaker, so obviously, uh, you, you have uh, one of the all of the slots is your own. But how do you recruit people who are going to speak, and how do you know? <laughs> That they're going to be good, which is more to the point. Well, once again, I know the people. I've been in this business a long time. I know the people, and and generally, I don't I don't put a speaker on stage until I've seen them or heard them. And right. yeah, you know, I, I have some feeling for it. I've, I've checked their, I've checked out with people that I know and trust in my trusted circle to say, hey, that's a great speaker. Or, and if, if they're not a great speaker, do they have great uh, content to deliver? You know, okay. a lot of great speakers stay, say nothing for an hour and just make everybody angry. You know, you have to you have to be a, a good speaker or have great content. I've, some of the most boring speakers in the world are fascinating because they have information that the people want. Because we're doing internet uh, seminars and we're doing uh, sales seminars, sales management seminars. Um, matter of fact, it, for the audience, I left our last our last event was in Detroit, and I've left that website up. If, if somebody wants to okay. take a look at it, it's uh, internetbattleplan.com. If somebody wants to take a look at it after the blab, internetbattleplan.com. And you'll see how I've got the speakers lined up and uh, the sponsors lined up on the website. You know, direct, go to the, are you, are you looking at it now? No, I'm not looking at it. I'm, t- I'm, I'm trying to type the URL in. I'll not do that again. There you go. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a... It, your last conference is actually up there uh, with the lineup and uh, mm-hmm. everything involved in that. Yes, yeah, so if you want to okay. see how we're promoting, the, and, and of course, I'm using LinkedIn, I'm using Facebook, uh, I'm using Google Plus, I'm using Twitter. And uh, right. And then I'm also doing blabs like we're doing right now with the speakers right. and the sponsors leading up to the event. That's brilliant. That's brilliant use of it. That that's that's very imaginative, and and I can see that uh, that working very well because people get to see who's sponsoring and who's going to appear at the event, and they get, it's a taster session, isn't it? It is, and blab blab is phenomenal. This this medium we're using right now, I put this on I put this on YouTube, I put it on Facebook, I put it on LinkedIn, and my last couple of blabs have gotten five hundred views each. Which when you do a one hour yeah. show, that's a lot of views. It is indeed, indeed, and they're all business oriented. Uh, yeah, and this this facility is is, is free, and we are alpha testers uh, <laughs> because uh, let's say it's in beta. Sometimes, uh, as, as we've had tonight, you get the hiccup, but they are pretty good at responding. Uh, and just for anybody who's going into their own labs, if you type in uh, at help at any point in time, you'll find that somebody from Blab will come on and will uh, will help us. Um, Right, so you, you've got your speakers lined up, uh, you've got your venue lined up, and now you've got to start uh, marketing. Marketing. Yes. Oh, yes, marketing. <laughs> I've seen so many people try to do the seminars and try to do the conferences and fail miserably. Yep. Okay, so what are the pitfalls? Well, the, well, the pitfalls are they, they think they can just go on Facebook and put a couple announcements up and they're going to fill the room. Right. You know, I have to. Okay. I have to. I have to sit here with my headset on, and I have to make a hundred calls a day. I mean, and I'm calling people, and um, you have to do three calls to get a connection anymore. Right. Yep. So you've got to persist, and you've got to get the decision makers. You've got to do the mass emails, and and email is definitely losing its value. Email is is diminishing in return because of all the spam. So right. you've got to. Con- texting is is probably better now, but there's a lot of laws about texting, and you've got to be opted in. You've got to really have texting under control. But texting has high response, extremely high response, if you've got permission to text. And right, so they've got to opt in first, and then 
there on on your text list as it were so you've got a text list which is the equivalent of a, an email list then it's an equivalent to an email list not as large but you're right because you're coming in on your cell phone and sometimes they have to pay to get your message so you, you okay. have to be respectful and um yes. you've known me 10 years i've known you 10 years respectful is very important it is and uh okay. yeah but lining up the sponsors once again i'd like to revisit, okay. i'd like to revisit that for a second okay. i've got a couple questions on it unlock that and uh bring in the question in okay very yep. interested in learning about sponsorship well i had a young woman at the national speakers convention two years ago and she's in the medical field and she says jim how do i get sponsors for my events i said well you start with the trade magazines and find out which corporations are advertising heavily that have a budget for this sort of thing and then you you approach them you go to their website you find out what their mission statement is you, you call them up and um she said okay so i'm going to attack pfizer i said no 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 pfizer has all the recognition you want the up-and-coming new company that's starting to put a, an advertising blast out there that, that needs to be on stage right so you find you know, what industry you're in and, and most of these conferences are industry specific yes but to locate the sponsors go into trade magazines go go into the, the, the trade websites and who's advertising there and then then approach them you have to have to be aggressive and i've done this for a long time and this, i had a sponsor call me up uh, this week one of my big sponsors mm -hmm. and said jim how many events are you having this year i said five she said okay uh put us in for fifteen thousand for each of the five and right. I, I said, oh, yeah, I can do that. I checked. <laughs> I'm, I'm able to do that. Yep. And she said, we're planning our annual budget. And so she she committed to five events. Right. Okay. That's based on your reputation and the reputation of the events. But I started, I started in, in 1982. I drove to Atlanta, Georgia with my mattresses tied to the roof of an old beat up car. I mean, we, we, didn't, we didn't fall on the top of the mountain. No. <laughs> you, know? you have to climb it. <laughs> I had to climb it. And the first yeah. sem the first seminar I did was 1986. I had just met my wife, and I had been a radio announcer. I've I've been in the car business. I've been a radio announcer previous to that, and well known radio announcer. I was a rock and roll DJ, and then so I had the speaking ability. And when I got and the first seminar I did was a finance seminar for automobile dealers. And I had 17 attendees at $500 each, but the problem was only two of them paid. Ah, the right, rest yeah. were friends of mine that I put in the room just so I'd have a photo opportunity for the next advertiser. Yeah, yeah. So you can you can build off, off anything, providing you frame it correctly. To build credibility, yeah. a lot of photography, and then in this day and age, video. Mm -hmm. A lot of video, a lot of photography for your for your collateral materials for the next event. Right. So, so one event feeds the next one. One event feeds the next one, and it gives you credibility. Photography and video is credibility. And when you've right. got that credibility, then you can sell the next event. And don't ever do anything. I always say first class in a first class environment. We don't do anything cheap. Right. You know, so you've got, to, you've got to set the standard. Well, people had come to expect it. People say to my wife, we've been to a lot of conferences. We've never had food this good. Right. She really works the hotels for a great menu. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people people realize that. They, they recognize that. When you have the cocktail reception, there are name brands on the bar. Yes. You know, so yeah. everything first class, first class environment, um, educational. I, I balance the speakers. I I... I I, I agonize over putting the schedule together. Mm. Oh, I can't have this woman next to this guy on the schedule or this guy. No, he, no she's got more energy. And, that, I, and I'm sitting there. I, I have a template with like building blocks, and I'm moving these speakers around until I've got it. Oh, that's good. This content will follow this content. And it, it's a visual thing. Mm. Mm. And then I so, go, yeah. Yeah, so carry on. Carry on. I have to so, figure out who my keynote speaker is. Who I don't want to be the keynote speaker. Everybody knows me. I'm sort of a miniature celebrity in this business, you know. 
I don't want to be the keynote. I want to have a keynote that is somebody that has a lot of energy, pizzazz. Um, we, we have fun. Mm-hmm. I, yes. uh, one thing I think you've realized over 10 years, I have a very unusual sense of humor. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell a joke and people laugh 10 minutes later. It, it sort of sneaks up on you. So that's that's what we do. And I want, I want the audience to have a lot of fun because if, if it's a boring conference, they, your reputation will get out there. Well, yeah, I slept through half of it. Yeah, that's that's no good at all. What you want? I was, t- I was speaking to uh, a mutual friend of ours the other day, Simon Raybould. Yes. Uh, he was saying he, he's he's uh, he's a presentation guy, and he he say he's good at presentations, but he trains other people to do it. Because I come to that in a minute. That being a, a presenter on stage is a, is a <gasps> so for some people it's a nightmare, and some people are born to it. But we'll come to that. But he said that uh, I presume it's true of, of conferences as well that. You want people to be welcome from the moment they come through the hotel door. You want them to enjoy the whole weekend, and you want them to go away and say, I'm going to go to the next one. Is that the, the sort of thing? You, you, That's you the sort of thing. Of, yeah. My, 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 my friend Sean Bradley also, and we, we're partnered on some business projects, but Sean also produces large conferences. And yep. this, this past week, I attended his conference in New Orleans. And mm-hmm. Uh, he, he he rented the entire uh, meeting hall of the House of Blues restaurant, the nightclub. He rented right. he rented the nightclub and closed it down and had a cocktail reception with a, a local uh, Cajun band, which was fairly famous. And just everybody had a, an exceptional time, and that's the kind of thing we try to do, both all of us. Yeah, it's an event. It's it's something that people will remember when when they've left and you want to give them that, uh, not only just knowledge but you want to have them as uh what what's, 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 envoys they go out and if somebody says i went to you know which conferences do you like they're going to point and say jim ziegler's conferences are the best yep yeah you want advocates that's what those words i was looking for i was talking earlier about uh photo credibility i have used pinterest and mm-hmm. Uh, Pinterest is is incredible, and every time we do an event, we put hundreds of photos on Pinterest of the event, the speakers, and 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 th- then when I'm I'm selling the event to the to the vendors, sponsors, or to the attendees, I actually take them to my Pinterest page and show them the photo album. Right, and literally thousands of photos of the events on Pinterest. So I'm using that as a sales tool. Yes. Yeah, it, I, I, the mix, it, as I said earlier, jigsaw and every piece is, is coming together uh, and it's getting the, the formula right so that every piece is in the jigsaw and it all works. And uh, presumably that takes experience. That takes time. Well, the experience, we, we, we learned on the job. We learned as we went. Yeah. I've got filing cabinets filled with bad ideas. <laughs> okay. Another feeling. Another feeling. Yeah. I have a saying that it is in my book. Um, Beware of distractions disguised as opportunities. Right. That's one of my original. You know, so many people get so distracted by side projects that they lose their core focus, and they they're, they're like grabbing at this and grabbing at that, and letting go of something to grab something, and they never have it. So we yeah. we are very focused, uh, very intense. Uh, I'm a funny guy. I laugh. I play, but I'm very intense. Indeed, indeed. So, if we go, just going back a moment. So, you plan the number of events you are going to have over the year. You plan where they are, and then your focus is on each event in turn. Yes. Uh, unlike a lot of people, I only plan one event at a time. Yeah. I don't start planning the next one. We just got back from one. My wife and I started planning the next one. We're looking at early March and we're going to do the event in Houston, Texas. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to contract the hotel of the Americas, which is a a large Hilton uh, near the convention center. We've already mapped out the the demographics of the audiences there. We, we know people will travel. And, and one other thing we, I have to get on the calendar and I have to research to be sure we're not butting heads with anybody else's conference on the calendar. Yeah. That's, mm. that, that's something, you know, and th- this is really hard because this this uh, 
first quarter, there's a lot of conferences that you have to navigate around. And I'm speaking at some of them. And I right. do a lot of keynote speeches. And uh, I use those events to round up audience for my events. Yes. Right, okay, so that's another area where, where you can actually find a, a, a market which is your own and uh-huh. you can market whilst you're there. Well, one thing about the car business, when I do a keynote speech to the car business, I'm a professional speaker, I'm a certified speaking professional, which is the highest award in the National Speakers Association, the highest earned award. So I'm a CSP, certified speaking professional. But most speakers are speaking to an audience of employees. My audience, almost 100% of the people in my audiences are auto dealers, and they can hire me. I'm speaking to an audience that can hire me. Most people are not. (laughs) Indeed, yeah. 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 Um, Right, yeah, I I just got one. uh, Bring in the question uh, asked by Miles, and uh, we're going back to mailing lists again, and we'll probably really visit several things. And he says, do you purchase mailing lists? I'm not using any hard mail except in the local market. Okay. People people come from Alaska and Hawaii to attend my, my conferences in Georgia. So, but I'm not mailing outside. If I'm doing a seminar in Houston, I will probably mail Northern Texas. Mm-hmm. Or right. Texas. Right. Yeah, I will mail around the, those zip codes, you know, that, that area. And what I mail is not, a, I will mail an oversized postcard. Right. Okay. One, one, yeah. that, does, one that doesn't fit in a pack of, post, you know, big postcard. Um, and both sides printed. And that way it's read by a number of people before it actually gets to the person that you're sending it to. Yes. And it's yeah. always read. It's not, not just thrown away as junk mail. Mm. So oversized postcards, Yes, we do use mailing lists, but not that's not the main focus. Our email list and our our social media is still the the biggest marketing tool we have. Facebook pay per clicks are incredible. Okay, can we focus on that for a moment then? The, the yes. Facebook mm-hmm. uh, marketing side of things. How does that begin? Well, uh, face, Facebook now has a whole advertising directive where you can buy a pay-per-click, very much mm-hmm. like, like Google. But um, the response is, 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 is phenomenal. And you can do what are called dark posts, and that's um, a brand-new marketing strategy on Facebook. You know, there are, there are 2 billion people on Facebook. Yes. And 38% of them are U.S. adults. So, yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, I agree. I mean, the, the market on Facebook is there, isn't it? The business market, not mm-hmm. not the consumer market. The business market is there, too. In 1928, uh, bank robber Willie Sutton was released from prison here in the U.S. 1928, I'm, I'm told, and I wasn't there, but I was told. And, and they asked Willie, why do you rob banks? And Willie said, because that's where the money is. Right. Why do you want to be on Facebook? Because that's where the people are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your newspaper, uh, newspaper has totally lost its effectiveness unless you're training a puppy or you own a bird. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah it's true. true. So, so you, you need to have uh, or your Facebook page, which is promoting this. Do you promote just through a, a business page, or do you promote on your own profile as well? I, I promote on my, my personal page. I've got. A number of business pages. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. Internet Battle Plan has its own Facebook page. Right. Yes. Uh, Z- Ziegler Super Conference has its own Facebook page. Ziegler Super Systems has its own Facebook fan page. So I've got, I don't know, 15 pages. Mm-hmm. And when I put something on one, I put it on all of them. I, I interlink them. And I, I yeah. boost some posts, but boosting isn't nearly as effective as pay per click. Right. But if so I do it, I can get it. Right. Okay. And press releases. Press releases. Yep. Can we just go what dark posts are? Well, a, a dark, dark, dark post doesn't show up on, on your page, it shows up on your timeline. Okay. And yep. the, the, not, not that much differentiated, but um, they're working quite well. 
we we have a press release for every speaker coming in. Yes. And we're using a, a you know PR newswire, and mm -hmm. we, you know I've got a, a fellow named Jay Scarron who does my blog, which is Alpha Dog Blog, and Dog is D A W G, like uh, Georgia Bulldogs, so, you know, football team. Real, real football, okay. not the stuff you do over there. All oh, right, okay, okay. <laughs> Soccer versus, versus yes, football. Uh, yeah. Alpha, alpha blog dot com. B o o g. Alpha d a w g blog dot com. Jay does that for me, and uh, we have a lot of action on alpha dog blog dot com, which is a WordPress site. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got you know, thirty or forty websites. You know, one pagers that. Our, our landing pages to take people elsewhere. But um, all of this is part of the marketing scheme. I, I think you're seeing, I don't know, you, I did, you and I did not discuss this previously, but it's all synergistic. Yes. Everything yeah. links to everything else. Mm. You know, mm. So we, we keep it all, you know, the, the Facebook page and the websites, the landing pages, the, the press releases, um, the mass, the mass emails, you know, We'll mail out 135,000 emails to a targeted list. And those people are opted in and, and are receptive to receiving those emails. And we don't abuse it. We're, you know, they're not people that we're just spamming unsuspectedly. Right. And that, that, that does take time. Right. Uh, how, how was that list built? You say 135,000. Is that, is that from uh, the seminars and, and the conferences you've done over the years? Every one of my conferences, we have a registration card that says that I can, I, if you sign it, I can photograph you, I can use your photograph in my, my advertisements, I can use video likeness of you, I, I can text you, I can fax you, I, I'm not, it's a complete disclaimer that I can use all media and I can email to you. And, and when people sign it, I, I've got that. And matter of fact, we have, we have stacks of, you'd be amazed. You know, okay. The registration card, I got stacks of them. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean, you know, we've been doing this for a while. <laughs> you know, and every one of them has got that disclaimer on the bottom. So and every one of them went into our computer list. So that's what we did. Right. Okay. So in terms of a computer list, which just for uh, – those are interested. Which system do you use? Because you've got quite a choice, haven't you? Using constant contact. Okay. Yep. And what's, what do you feel the benefits of, of that are? Well, I can customize the templates there. I can insert video into the email. Um, there's a number of, of things I can do with constant contact. That or MailChimp are the two best, in my estimation, for entrepreneurial businesses. Yes. You know, not corporate okay. business, but we're entrepreneurial. You know, usually one or two operators. We're, we're, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the, the email side and we've built the list and we've got the disclaimers. Uh, and now that we come on to the next uh, uh, element in the army, which is Twitter. Yes. Now, uh, Twitter, Twitter, I'm using hashtags. Okay. Yep. Here we go. Hashtag is the navigation of Twitter you yes. know, to, to find to find a destination or to find people that are like-minded. And of course, the National Speakers Association is NSA, hashtag NSA15. I use hashtag auto marketing, which is at car dealers, uh, uh, hashtag uh, car dealer, hashtag car people, um, hashtag automotive news, hashtag auto news. So there's a number of hashtags that we, we tweet on. and. Uh, I view Twitter as a traffic director. Mm -hmm. I don't use Twitter to try to sit and get 140 characters. What are you going to do? But I put a link in Twitter to a larger text block. And what, what, what excuse me. I use it for a larger text block. And mm -hmm. um, I use LinkedIn. I'll put a blog on LinkedIn. And that blog on LinkedIn will be about about the um event. you may even have a youtube video embedded in right so, okay so i'll tweet the link uh on twitter to linkedin which takes them to youtube <laughs> right yeah you've got everything together and the web the website link is there so 
once again, there's all those synergies of social media and it works out quite well because I can put a lengthy blog about my event, you know, on, on LinkedIn and get all the benefit of the LinkedIn audience, but I can also bring in the Twitter audience and right. I will also post a Facebook link. You know, okay. My personal page, one of my business pages, because I've opened them up where anybody can see them. They're, they're completely public and transparent. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. locked out. So I can put a, I can put a, a lengthy text article on my Facebook page, and then tweet it, and people will come to it. And I'm, I'm using a number of the industry blogs too. Um, dealer Elite, um, Automotive um, Dealer Community. There's a number of of blogs that are specific to the car business that that I I'll, I'll post on. Right. Okay. Now, that that the point you just made about Twitter is very important, isn't it? Because if you don't use hashtags, your audience is limited to people who are following you. Yes. And of those who are following you, only one percent will be online at the time you send out the tweet. So using hashtags, you've got to get the hashtags. You've got to get the right hashtags. Yeah. You got to get hashtags and um. I have hashtag alpha dog. I've got hashtag um, IBP, which is internet battle plan. And, yeah. you know, and we'll put specific numbers. Like I think I'm up to battle plan 18 now. So it'd be IBP 18. Yes. And um, yeah, the, the super conferences are, are the counterpart. That's for the sales managers. Mm -hmm. And I'll do the super conference and then I'll come back to the same location and do a battle plan. Right. Which is which are other employees in the same company, so I've already established a list of people that'll pay in that community, and then I come back and do another. With it, with and you've other the, sorry, you've established a venue as well. I've established a venue. Um, uh, we we use the. Uh, I say we don't do a whole lot of events at the water. That's not entirely true because we we did uh, two of them last year in Seattle. Mm -hmm. You know, which is as far away from where I am now as you, you can be in the continental U.S. and it's diagonally across the country. But Seattle, we use the Red, the Redmond Marriott, and we use that the event. We did two events there, you know, six months apart. Right, and that's where the Microsoft International Campus is, and every beautiful community. A lot, a lot of appeal because it was an internet conference to be that close to the the Microsoft International Headquarters. Mm. They can take a tour Indeed. and do things. Indeed. If it wasn't for, for Microsoft and Google, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing now. Uh, oh, I mean, no. when, we, when we both started, this was, was even a dream. Uh, this is the bad situation. <laughs> we managed to bring everything, everything to life in the one space. So we've got Facebook, we've got Twitter, we've got blogs on LinkedIn. Let me, let me. Uh, now I'm going, to come, I'm going to come to the one that I know you enjoy doing. Uh, I know you enjoy doing it because your enjoyment shines through, and that's Pinterest. I love Pinterest. Pinterest, Pinterest. <laughs> people don't get the power of Pinterest. Pinterest moves your URL all over the internet. Every time somebody repins one of your pins, if your URL is in it, you have another Google stopping point. If you Google me up, I personally come up over four million times. I mean, and that, they're all me. Yes, yes, it's all real. <laughs> yeah, you own page one through uh, yeah. one thousand and more. Yeah, okay. I got a feeling if you just put the letter J in, I'll come up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm working towards the typing in Stephen followed by Blab. Uh, um, Hopefully one day I'll catch you up, but I don't think I'll ever reach those those numbers. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, though, that, that if if people uh, look, search for you, they're going to find you. There's there's no there's nowhere they're not going to find you. They're going to find you on Facebook. They're going to find you on Pinterest, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and that's it. It's, it's being known, isn't it? Being well, visible. It, it you could be so visible, and like I say, I'm a, a miniature celebrity in, in my in my niche. Yeah, I can I can shop at a, a supermarket and not be recognized. I'm not that internationally known like Tom Cruise, but by the same token, when I go to the car convention, the international the National Automobile Dealers Annual Convention, large convention, I'm signing autographs and, and selling bobbleheads of myself. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. 
So that's right. what I call a niche celebrity, <laughs> you know, not known anywhere else. But, you know, something you said earlier, let me go back to it. Sure. You said we didn't have the Google and all of this when we first first got in business. No. When I started doing seminars in the 80s, in the 90s, uh, Sprint, Sprint Telephone Company were giving away free long distance on the weekends. Okay. Yeah. So I had, I got a bank of fax machines uh-huh. and we set them to start at midnight Friday night and they would all the way through midnight Sunday night, we would send out 10,000 faxes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was the technology of the day. Yeah. So we were advertising via fax, and Sprint the, was giving free weekends. Absolutely brilliant. But you you managed you you brought those lessons learned uh, through the fax age, through the text age, into the, mm-hmm. the internet age, and email, and Facebook and Twitter. So it's sort of built up, hasn't it? And the, the thing that also comes across is that Debbie and yourself organise the contests, the conferences between you. Uh, you really enjoy it. I love what we do. I'm 68 years old. You know, you don't look at Jimmy, don't you? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm living right. I went, yep. my, I went to my class reunion recently, 50 year class reunion from high school, and a bunch right. of old people snuck in and put on their friends' name badges. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was talking to one old girl and I said, I used to date this girl in high school and I, I mentioned the name. I said, I wonder what happened to her. She said, I am her. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. I think so, because so, I'm still working, I'm not going to get old. Indeed. I, I, I agree with that philosophy. Uh, if you if you look enough to do something which you, you are reasonably good at or even brilliant at uh, and enjoy it, then your whole life is better, isn't it? Debbie and I, we, we, we're having such a great time. I'm teaching internet to young people. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I've got underwear older than most people in the audience. <laughs> I'm teaching internet. It's incredible. You know, you, you, and the feeling is so good. And they're looking and saying, what does, how could he know this? How could he know this? You know? Because we yep. totally, we totally, re, totally reinvented. That's yeah. right. That's right. People you're tell me going, but... your, your social media is not technically good. Well, I'm selling all these conferences, and yeah, I did a seminar in Indianapolis here two weeks ago. Yeah, and the seminars are small. We had forty people at fifteen hundred dollars each. Yeah, the cost of the entire event was less than five thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. How's your math? My math's pretty good, and that's fifty-five profit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but the, the, that's that's on the on the day. That's, that's for the weekend. The the magic is everything you've done to to make that happen, isn't it? Um, it, it, it people is. look at the numbers and say, "Cool, you know, forty people, uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Um, I can do that." No, you can't. <laughs> and you can't do it. <laughs> the reasons that we've been talking about, and Jim, uh, you've you've built up over the years haven't you You, you've Mm -hmm. learned and and tried different things and you say you've got things which which didn't work but you now got a situation where you've got a formula that does work and you you're using it well you know when i came to the uk in 2008 yeah this was about two years after we met and Mm -hmm. when i came to the uk and academy and all the things we were doing that was october of 08 and the u.s economy crashed while I was in the UK, that's when the, the stock market fell. Everything when I had 40 employees and 6,000 square feet of offices. I don't know if you recall in the yes, early days, yeah. I laid all those people off. Yeah, I mean, we had to totally reinvent ourselves, and we, we were getting seminars with 150 people in my own office, right? I mean, yeah. my employees were selling the seminars. And I had to come back and totally reinvent where I was selling the seminars and not just performing them. So yeah, we started over again in 08 to be real honest. We lost a million dollars that year. Yeah. I wasn't broke by a long shot. I mean, but wasn't going to continue to lose that kind of money. Hmm. 
so the people in the audience and the people in, in the replay audience are going to have to understand, you know, yeah, we've been successful, but we had to totally reinvent the business, you know, when, when the economy fell. Mm. Which, which you, 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 you did and a difficult time for yourself and Debbie, but then you went on and reinvented and you've been building back ever since. Yeah. We, we, I got on the telephones in December of 08. And we had lost, like I said, we just lost a billion dollars real money. But that's not accounting. I was writing checks back to the company out of our personal money. Yes. And, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a month, and writing those checks back to the business. And when I got on the telephones and started really seriously reselling, we had a forty thousand dollar net profit in January of '09. Okay. So we came back that quickly. Yes. With no employees. Hmm. Right, yeah, yeah. What advice uh, do you just we'll, we'll open the seat in a moment for pe people to take uh, to join us if, if they wish and ask questions directly. Uh, but what advice would you give to somebody thinking of starting up in the conference world? Give it that they have the expertise in the industry and they're looking to uh, diversify and go into the conference business. Would you say is it? Well, they need to speak. Okay. They need to speak at other conferences first. Right. Okay. Yep. They need to. They need to get stage presence. They need to hone their stage skills and, and 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 hang around people that are successful. I've mentored so many people, Steve. Yes. I have. I have no envy. I. I will help. I will help. I've helped some of my biggest competitors. You know, I, there's, there's yeah. plenty of business and. I, I, there was a, a movie, uh, Pay It Forward. I, I think I try to live that. And, um, you know, wimpy chick flick, uh, kid died, women cried. You remember that thing? Yeah. But yes, kid, I do. Yes. Yeah, the kid died. But uh, I, I, try to, I try to help people. And mm. uh, I try not to have envy. I, I don't want anything you have. I might want something like what you have, but I don't want yours. <laughs> yes. I understand completely where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, uh, let's open up. See, we got some people want to talk to us. Right. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to come on camera, all you need to do uh, is to press the call-in sign that's underneath. Uh, John, if you want to pop in, you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, and anyone else watching, if you just want to uh, click the call-in button and come on there. And uh, yeah, I see John Upton's uh, up here. Um, let's see. Yeah. I'm just going to go through. Uh, we've got new car mark. I'm just roll of on a test partner. Is a social media juggernaut. He's, he's a good friend. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's got a like half a million Twitter followers. New car mark, big guy. Right. New car okay. mark's one of my best secret weapons. Uh, while we're okay. There. Right. Okay. If, well, we're not going to push anybody to join us. Uh, no. But if, if you do want to help, and then do. We have a, a, a question, which is. Uh, we've been talking about your own use of Facebook marketing, and uh, and Masoud has a question: uh, How do you use Facebook on marketing to get a huge conversion? So, can we just go through that, that again? Uh, the use of, of Facebook to actually uh, market. So okay, first of all, pay per click, pay per click, and I put a lot of uh, controversial subjects and videos up. And I, I interact with my, my Facebook followers. Um, yes. Yes, I interact yeah. with them. Um, if, if you could see right now, I've got several screens. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, I'm using my screens for lighting right now. I've got Google on two of them. Okay. Because yeah, <laughs> Google's mostly white. And it, it, it lights yeah. you up when you're on black. Yeah. <laughs> the center screen, you're on the center screen, guys. I've got Google on either side. So I've, got, I've got white light coming at me from two directions. That's why I'm so well lit up. Yeah. <laughs> Using my screens for yeah. stage lighting. But, but yeah. Yeah. So I, I generally have Facebook on one of the screens 100% of the time. Yeah. And then I'm working. I'm using my, my Outlook. I'm using my, my contact management on the center screen. And then uh, I've got Word documents and things on the other screen. So I'm basically multitasking. Um, I'm a one-man business development center in that respect. But the interaction with the people on Facebook, and, and I'm, okay, is that Miles? Yes. I'm going to tell Miles something. Um, I I wasn't going to say, I have secret groups. 
Okay. You can yep. have a secret group on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I have a group called uh, uh, the Alpha Dog Tribe. And yes. the Alpha Dog Tribe is nearly 7,000 members, and they're all car business specific. And right. every time a post, and they're some of the strongest players in the business. And anytime a post goes on Alpha Dog Tribe, we will get as many as 200 posts on a post. I mean, yep. that, that's how active this group is. It's the most active group you've ever, ever imagined on Facebook. And I'm the only, I'm the only admin. If, if they misbehave or break the rules, I'll throw them out. Yeah. And I've, yep. I've, I've tossed a number of people out and they always get mad and go form a little anti zebra group somewhere. <laughs> you know, a little, little troll group, you know? Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I've been there. But we have certain rules. You're not allowed to use foul language in the group. Yeah. You're not allowed to attack another member. You know, there's certain rules. Are you not allowed to advertise it unless you're me? Okay, fine. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's written down in the rules. I'm the only person yeah, in there that's fine. allowed to advertise. And, yeah, but uh, within, yep. Sorry. Yeah. So with, within the group, you, you're, ex, you're exchanging ideas and expertise. Exactly. When I did yep. the event in Indianapolis two weeks ago, we had right at 40 people in the room, paid, paid, paid attendees, 22 of them were from the tribe. Right. Okay. 22 of them were from my private group. So yeah. starting a private group, it's a secret group. You can't Google it up. You can't find it. You can't put it in a search engine. Um, Facebook will allow you to have a completely secret group. Okay. Invitation only. That's, that's another piece in the jigsaw. Yeah, I wasn't going to tell you that, but I, because I, I, we we tell people you're not allowed to talk about the tribe outside the tribe. So like, all right, club. okay, <laughs> it's like it. Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody right. asks you about the tribe, it's an urban myth. <laughs> no just, uh, yeah, got it. Just going going back to uh, just to clear one thing. We, you talked about Facebook ads versus pay per click, mm -hmm. and pay per click was was the your preferred method. It, it is. I'll do that on one of my fan pages. Usually I'll use it on the uh, Internet Battle Plan fan page. Mm -hmm. right. We'll put people to the page or we'll put them to the website, internetbattleplan.com. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, that, that, that's very helpful. We're learning a, a lot tonight. I think that the, the building your, your reputation through asking questions on Facebook, getting people interactive, interacting with you and you you can you can be controversial it doesn't have to be I, i've seen some of the posts Jim. it doesn't have to be <laughs> on your uh industry does it no you might want to people yeah. involved well I, I get the brits all fired up with you you know if i want to get the brits all fired up all i gotta do is say boy i can't wait for president trump to fix everything <laughs> that's true that, it's, it's just it's, it is the key to, to to social networking. It's not broadcasting. It's not standing up, is it? It's either creating uh, content that people comment on or commenting yourself, isn't it? It's interaction. It's, it's, it's got to be sticky. You got to be sticky. They got to stick around. They got to. They can't. Everybody checks my page every day to see what off the wall things I'm going to put on it. <laughs> Be included. <laughs> Be included. Right? What is he I'm doing there as well. today? What's he doing today? <laughs> Just you know, no. It, it's it's. Um, I, I I laugh sometimes because I, I don't always believe everything I post. Now, one of my other secret weapons is here. new car, Mark. I love you, Jim. Thanks. That, that's Mark. Right. Mark. Mark has half a million relevant followers. Wow. And on Twitter. That's on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. If I got something I need help with, I'll say, Mark, would you please retweet this? And he does. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, well, which is yourself. wonderful. But that's a two-way street, isn't it? Because if yes. he wants something, you'll you'll help him out. I don't have near the the clout he does. I mean, he's Mark. Mark is a juggernaut. He's Goliath. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, and an hour's flown by. It's it's a really, it has. It yeah. Is, that doesn't feel like an hour. <laughs> no, no, indeed. Uh, and and the, I think that the lab has, has performed very well. And with yourself in Georgia and me in Wiltshire, across the pond, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a marvellous technology. 
and uh, there to be applauded. Um, if there are any questions from the audience, Jim will be happy to take those. Uh, yes, please. If, if, and you can contact Jim. As Jim said, if you want to know anything at all and you want to contact Jim, just type in Jim Ziegler uh, into Google and you will find him. He's got it covered uh, all the way through. Um, and th it's been a pleasure. Uh, I really enjoyed yes, tonight's um, um This friendship, um, I can't tell you, you know, I, I go back to the academy. We, we were on the academy blogs together. Yeah. Do you remember the Indeed. first? Do you remember the first thing I ever did on the academy? I did a blog called Academy and the Spice Girls. Uh, it, it brings bells. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Why are you? What do you want? What do you? What do you want? What do you really, really want? You really want? Yeah. 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 And, and <laughs> that was the biggest blog in the history of academy. It it went on forever and ever, and. Yeah. You know, Thomas Power, everybody who's looking, what in the world? Who is this Yank? <laughs> <laughs> in, indeed, there were a lot of great friendships made, made at that time. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a, it, 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 if we were going to describe it, it was Facebook before Facebook, wasn't it? It was. Because you could, you could blog, there were groups, you could place advertisements, mm -hmm. a whole range of things which we, we now uh, expect of Facebook were a, a Belbong Academy. You know, when and, I came uh, to Great Britain, I came to the UK in, in 08, yeah. 60 people came out to meet me. We had a, yeah. at a party in a pub. And yes. I was amazed that, 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 you know, people would meet offline like that uh, from a, a social setting. Mm. And I've, I've yeah. made such lifelong friends, people, people that I still communicate with, that I've only met once face to face, or I've never even seen you face to face. But we have been such great friends online. That's right. That's, that's true. We've helped and supported each other on on many an occasion over the years, and, and kept in touch. Um, yeah, as as John says now, that there are, there are four academy uh, members or ex academy members online. And we, we're still together as a group. I mean, the Prospect Networking Group is a public group. It's not a, not a, not a, a secret group. Uh, but that that uh, is brilliant because that has kept over 200 Academy members uh, as a group. And people are still helping each other. People are still meeting up. And, and that will that will continue. I still talk to the arrows. I talk. I follow the arrows too. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I think we should. I mean, the, the way that... Yeah. Fraser yeah. Day. Fraser, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a whole host of good people uh, who, I mean, we got our grounding in 2016. We learned all about uh, how social networking should be done. I had 100,000 some odd people on, on the academy when, when yeah. it changed hands. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a, an investment, didn't we? In well, time. Absolutely. Yeah. Stephen, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for yours, Jim. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And the fact that we can get together like this and talk. I'm sure that we, we could get together in the new year and uh, perhaps expand on a different area uh, and, and just have a chat like we're doing now. I would love that. Together. Absolutely I would love, love that. I would love to uh, in, in the new year. Um, I'd really look forward to, to getting together and chatting. Uh, I don't know where that sound came from, my side or your side. I'm going to switch the recording off now. What we'd like to do, I would like to say thank you, Jim, for us, to, to the people. Thank you so it. much. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Jim. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you to everybody who's who's watched and uh, listened, and for people who've asked questions. We appreciate it. Uh, like uh, Jim, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jim, Jim and I have had a ball. Uh, this is the first time we've met, so it's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, we've met on air. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you in 2016. We wish you all the best for the coming uh, festive season. And once again, thank you. And it's good night. I'm just going to stop recording now.